as the waters covered the sea. Let your glory be seen in me. We praise the Lord. We praise the Lord today with praise and prayer and thanksgiving. There are three separate functions, even ministries, but thanks be to God today. And I say that because your requests will be answered. I know you have requests. I know we all do, but today, let me decree today that your requests shall be answered in prayer and in thanksgiving. Well, hello and uh, thank you for joining us. Now, there's a caution. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There's a caution. Now I am, I, I found it um, a wonderful thing to be able to organize these teachings in sets of four messages. I found that the anointing goes on for that period of time on that given word. But for you, do not say, do not say, well, I know what it is after part one and message two, and then don't go away. Be never go away, because the Holy Spirit always abundantly supplies us with more food, more word, more thought. So the end may be better than the beginning. I'm telling you, stay tuned. That's not a sales pitch. I have nothing to sell you, unfortunately. But I want to bless you today with this word in the name of Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Uh, we all praise God. Last time we talked a lot about the increasing importance of the successor. And it is my desire and my prayer that you, coming as successors to your ancestors, that you increase and uh, never decrease. Can I press in on that for you? That today will be a greater day than yesterday. And this year, even in the last two months, shall bear more fruit than even the first two months of the year. If I pray like that and I send the word, will you believe that it will happen? Well, the Lord bless you and I pray that you increase today as we pray on and preach. Amen. So here is our word of prayer. A word of prayer. I'm asking for some things today. And so, in Messiah's name, we're at the time of Messiah. When I hear the second coming, I hear Messiah, Yeshua, HaMashiach. Today we ask in Messiah's name, we ask for clarity of vision, hearing and understanding by the Spirit of God that we receive and live in the maximum benefit of his provision. We believe in, we believe even in this hour of extreme testing, wilderness conditions, Red Sea crossings, that great benefits are released into the lives and the circumstances of those who remain in your presence, God, giving thanks with prayer and thanksgiving. Gather as you have purposed and planned in your own heart. 
And let transformation of mind, O oh Lord, be quick. Quick of understanding by your spirit. Let there be an abundance of right action in peace and in power. Let now the anointed word enable our renewed thinking. And Father, restore failing minds. Strengthen weakened hands. And clothe us again today in your glory. Amen. Amen. So be it. The transformation of the mind is paramount, is most important. Uh, but I, I want to say one thing about uh, being transformed in your mind. That's not what the message is about. But even as we preach, it will happen. But the, what it is, is that we talk about the transformation of your mind. But in each truth that we present to you, and each truth that you receive in the Spirit, in that truth, let your mind be transformed. Now that was revealed to me last week. And I began to speak it. And a revealed word always makes more sense each time you speak it. It is awesome. So let your mind today be renewed in the hearing of this word. For whatever is in this word today, you shall receive. Whatever anointing, whatever clothing, whatever power, whatever encouragement, whatever strength, whatever this message has been received in and proceeds out to you, be clothed in that thing by Christ Jesus. I say it again, be clothed in that power and in that anointing in which this word was conceived by the Holy Ghost, uh, released into my spirit and I send the word to you today in Jesus name. Now, we are, uh, hallelujah, let us continue focusing on Christ Jesus. Let us, con he's the greatest yet. I'm going to help you out along that road here. As you continue focusing on Christ Jesus, hallelujah, paying careful attention to what he is doing, he's doing. These works and works of Christ Jesus have life-giving power to come alive on the inside of you. Even as I speak, so be it, let it be so, that these words are springing forth uh, like living water out of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Life-giving words. And these then being seeds these words that being seeds must sprout and gray and bear much fruit. We praise the Lord. So here is something. Here's where we're going today. Praise the Lord. Well, not long ago, actually uh, a week ago, a, um, a wonderful member of my church uh, asked me this question. Apostle, what exactly is sin? Now, you may say, I know what that is, but what is it, she said. I thanked her for the word. I look back to the days of the 80s when we wrestled with sin, nature, and flesh. You heard a lot about the flesh in the 80s. People wrestling with the definition and the wisdom of what sin was. But, but now I remember clearly my pastor explaining that sin simply means missing 
the mark. Amen. Miss the mark. But today, because of Christ Jesus, I understand the mission and the ministry of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit because of this understanding of what sin is. Now, I know that sin and the sin nature go together. We have it. We've had it. For the purposes of this dialogue today, then we say that sin is the manifestation of all and everything that separates you from God and from the knowledge of God. That's what it is. I'm speaking of this, putting two ideas together, the power of Christ to remove it and the profoundness of what it is. Now, if it took Christ to remove it, you've got to know that sin is a huge deal. There's nothing for you to pass over. I'm going to carry on a little bit. I said it took Jesus Christ to remove it. What is crucial here for you today is to know that repentance and forgiveness work together. After you repent, of course, forgiveness is laid up for you. It's ready, available. You just have to ask for it. But though you repent, and uh, folks repent time and time again, you know, some do every week, every day. The root of sin in Genesis, there's a, it's right there. The root of sin in Genesis is called the knowledge of good and evil, which we believe remains until it is removed. And the account is found in Genesis chapter 2, verse 11. Now, just hold on to that thought for a minute. Let this word then witness to you deeply today where it truly matters that you may understand the purpose of your calling in Christ Jesus. You see, Christ Jesus is sending forth a brilliant light into your situation today. He's a uh, hallelujah. Putting light upon darkness so that your hearts and your eyes be opened. Even now we praise the Lord. And there is a new covenant light, if you will, is a new covenant light streaming across the land. But uh, we have not come to terms with the fact that the new covenant light is blasting across the universe. Causing such a, a con combustion and disturbance that everything is seeming like it's rolling around in a mess because of the the, the, the abundance of glorious power like hitting the planet in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me just move on. Praise God for that. And so, looking back then into the old covenant, the law with all its statutes, ordinances, commands and decrees was put into effect by God through Moses to manage sin, to control sin, and to keep it in check. You'll hear that. Now, let me confess to you today that the knowledge and the power of good and evil cannot be managed, controlled, or kept in check. I confess to you ah, that Christ Jesus, the greater one, was sent as the only one with the power and the authority to remove sin. 
to cancel its long-term and damaging effects upon the soul. Ah. I am not sent. I know my message. I'm not sent to decode the law. That's not my function. But I am sent to preach about him who delivers, removes, and cancels forever the effects of that sin, that controlling power that lies hidden deep at the core of the soul. Let your mind and your thinking be renewed today on this one truth. He delivers, he removes and cancels, blots out, has made atonement for, but also removed it. After the successful completion of what we know to be 40 days in the wilderness, being tested and tried to the core of his being, Jesus Christ begins to do a work in the earth. What the Son of God set about to do in the earth was to uproot and pull out the roots of the sin nature that was formed by disobedience, uh, uh, leaving room for the knowledge of sin, good and evil. We say, are you separating the knowledge of it from the thing itself? Yes, because <laughs> you, Paul says, well, don't keep sinning that grace increases. So there is an effect that sin can be removed and some more spring up in its place. Why that is? Because the knowledge of sin. The knowledge of good and evil still wrestles at the seat of the soul. And so Jesus Christ comes and uh, he begins to cancel and remove the effects of the sin nature. We watch him working in the Gospels. Uh, and you say, well, what? is he doing? Why is he hanging around and worrying about the outcasts and the lepers? Uh, it's because he's on a mission, you see, to go after and uproot and pull up the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So he meets up a leper. And the leprosy is synonymous with sin. So Jesus Christ, uh, don't get too fancy and carried away in the gospel. Jesus Christ is after the thing that easily besets you. The thing that Paul said, when I think to do right, I'm going wrong. And when I think I've got it made, I'm not so sure. And uh, I want this thing gone. And so Jesus Christ sets about performing miracles of the spirit, removing the sin nature. All that has been attached to the sin nature. Did this man sin? Did his parents sin? He recognized that blindness and a condition of blindness can also be attached to the root of the sin nature. So Jesus Christ cancels it by opening the blind man's eyes. Amen. He sends the leper home, leper free. Yeah, leprosy free. I don't know, folks. Then, <laughs> the gospel itself, he 
continues. What is making up the gospel for you is the acts of Jesus Christ and his contention, his confrontation with the knowledge of the root of good and evil. The gospel continues to work on this count. There's never a time in the gospel that you will find any one of us and those that went before working on any other issue. If you check it out, you'll find they're after the knowledge, the remnant, the remains. There's something about that person. They have it all the way to 54% good, 60% good. But what is it that causes them to give it all up and return to this thing? And Jesus Christ is saying, today return no more. Like a good father, he gives credit for those things that you have. You don't tell your children you're all bad. You say, well, you've got it 95% right. The five that I'm concerned about is important. Let's fix that. I'm just helping you out today. So Jesus Christ, oh, do you love him? Well, Abba, see, Kadosha. Praise the Lord, Abba. So, being created, here's this, here's the thing. I, I, I believe and I know that each one of us is a brilliant work of the ultimate creator, the Elohim. Now, please follow me closely so that your discernment and your faith will increase. This is going to happen, I've asked, I've prayed. Being created in the maker's likeness and image, a provision of a glorious covering was upon man before we encountered the knowledge of good and of evil. A beautiful, glorious, miraculous covering was up upon man. I know it because I discovered that when you come into contact with the ministry of Christ, a covering and a light begins to encircle you again. Oh God, it's true. We praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The light and the glory fell off of Adam and they proceeded to discern a condition that we know as fear. Why? They hid you say, well, we didn't know that, Apostle. No, the Holy Spirit told me. They hid. Then they began to cover themselves up in an artificial covering that was insufficient and it still is. Read Genesis chapter 1 and 2, go all the way to 3, and Genesis is intriguing, stay with it, uh, don't be afraid of it, uh, stay with the word, hallelujah. Now then, we know that they try to fix it, I am telling you, you cannot cover it up, You it will break out somewhere else and God help us if in this hour of testing everything that was hidden shall come to light God is merciful when he exposes some things because he loves you and he wants it dealt with run to the master hallelujah now then oh some time ago Here they, uh, oh, the nakedness they experience, the fear, the guilt, the loss of covering was enough to separate them from the presence of God. My message is to you through Christ Jesus that you be reinstated fully in the glorious presence of God through Jesus Christ. My message to you. Now, here is something. In Job chapter 1 and verse 8 to 9, something happened 
They praise the Lord. Something happened. <laughs> Job was considered blameless and upright. A man who feared God and shunned the evil. <laughs> Satan knew about the covering that was upon the first man and woman. He also knew that uh, the covering was upon Job. And listen to this. Verse 9, does God, does Job fear God for nothing? Like some of you, I've been fasting and I've been doing this and that. I've been going to church, tithing and that. Well then, does God, Job fear God for nothing? Satan tempting him. This is a temptation. Have you not put a hedge around him and his household and everything that he has? Oh God, I'm praying for you. God not put a hedge around you and your family. Yes, man has a hedge. You have blessed the work of his hands so that his flocks and his herds stretch out. But now God is, Satan is in the throne room presenting his case against Job. But now stretch out your hand and strike everything that he has and he will surely curse you to your face. For this reason, I brought that up because I'm talking about the knowledge of God, the glory of God that wrapped man in from the beginning, that covered Job and uh, that covered you. Hallelujah. And I'm praying today, hallelujah, I'm praying today that through this glorious Son of God that was sent to restore the covering, we preach Christ, we preach Christ, that you regain your status before God. Let this great light return and cover you today even as I preach oh God cover your people Christ Jesus then a quickening spirit of light the greater one hallelujah not only covers you externally but uh, the ability of this second Adam to shine out from the inside exists I believe outside the, 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 the hall of uh, uh, where Jesus was uh, being uh, interrogated, uh, a, a woman saw one of the folks that was uh, maybe a court uh, recorder, I don't know but who she was, but she said, surely Peter, you were with him. I tell you, the glorious covering of the master, ah, oh Rabbi, is back upon the believer because of the attention ah, to the detail of the gospel. For spending time in the presence of God. Jesus Christ's mission is as coming to restore the covering, the impenetrable kabod, the glory, uh, the presence that is yours. It is unthinkable for me to believe that while we exist in the knowledge and in the glory of Christ, knowing that we're made in the creator's image, that we would take down our own house. We are not only disobeying God, we are destroying our own house. It is the worst. I, I, I cannot believe the profoundness of this whole thing. But what I can believe even more is that, oh, I'm going to tell you that Christ is greater than the covering that came off and if I am permitted I will preach and in the anointing and I will ask that uh, while I'm ministering that the garment the covering returns believe it is spoken in Psalm 107 
107. Uh, I haven't seen it for a while, but I know it's there that he wraps himself in light as it were a garment. I'm going to put up the word for you. And so then, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray today that you, as you ask, I repent, then Lord forgive, then reinstate. Don't stop. If I repent, forgive, Lord, then reinstate. I'm missing the glory and the covering. And so then, in deep humility, I ask. Now then, let the hedge be rebuilt, O Lord. Let their souls be healed and cleansed. And the glorious light from the streaming from the face of Christ illuminate them today for the purpose of returning intact the covering that was once there. Sin cannot be managed. It must be removed. The Lord bless you. Why? Increase in this truth. Be transformed in this truth today and live. The Lord bless you. I'll be back in a minute. Shalom. Father, we, we thank you. We really, really, God, I thank you for this word today. And I thank you for these messages. It is important that we know exactly the story of how we overcome. I preach in a manner that you may follow, that you may return to any episode and be able to pick up a connecting thread even unto this day. But today, as I live in the light of Christ, I am praying that Every form of self-destructive behavior. I discovered that you cannot possess the image and likeness of the Father and then destroy the very image in which you live. And so I ask today, God, that um, as this message is heard, that not by controlling your actions, but by seeking and living in the power of Christ, that the glorious covering returns. You wake up a different man and a different woman in his glorious presence, his nature. So be it. Amen. I'll be back next time. Shalom. Amen. You can reach Apostle Dr. Eureka Stewart via email at thebreakthroughatbethesdamiracle.com, on her website at bethanycovenantalive.net. Use to contact us on Facebook at apostle.dr.e.stewart. Voice Over the Nation's TV ministry is on every Sunday at 5 p.m. on YouTube and on Facebook. Thereafter, it's on the BethanyCovenantAlive.net website. You can also find it on YouTube. Search under Voice Over the Nations. Donate if you are in agreement with what the Apostle is doing. Help the Apostle to help you. Sow into her ministry and become a partner. Use the donate link on the BethanyCovenantAlive.net website. 
Prayer requests are available on the BethanyCovenantAlive.net website. Put the Apostle to work for you. Share your prayer requests. She will pray for you and into your situations. Service. See the Apostle live in action, preaching the now word of God every Sabbath. at Saturday from noon till 3 p.m. at 89 Thornmount Drive, Unit 11, Scarborough, Ontario, Canada, near the corner of Morningside and Shepherd. If you are in agreement with helping the Apostle to take her ministry to the nations, become a partner. Use the donate link on the Bethany Covenant Alive website. Podcasts and intimate chat with Apostle Dr. Eureka Stewart are available via BethanyCovenantAlive.net or you can search Eureka Stewart on Apple, Google, Spotify, Breaker, or Anchor. The Apostle releases a kingdom quote every day in English and Spanish. They are available on the BethanyCovenantAlive.net website or on Twitter and Instagram. Twitter is D-R-E-U-R-I-C-A. Instagram is dr.e.stewart. If you are in agreement with helping the Apostle bring a World Healing Day event, become a partner. Use the donate link on the BethanyCovenantAlive.net website.